Hey happy travelers! Greetings from just outside Denali National Park. We stayed in this awesome tiny home last night and today we are taking a bus tour into the interior of Denali and I'm so excited. I better see some bears. Staying about 15 minutes south of the park entrance. Hopefully we have time to stop and get a little bit more coffee because I'm not nearly caffeinated enough. And it's gonna be an eight hour bus ride. We're in it for the long haul today, but it's gonna be amazing, I'm excited. This morning we're taking the Tundra Wilderness Tour. They have both narrated and non-narrated buses that go into the park. The non-narrated buses are transit buses, so they're taking people to the lodges in the park, backpackers, campers, but you can still ride it in and check out the scenery. But the narrated tours are quite a bit more expensive, but it's more like a tour. And unfortunately, the transit buses were full or else we'd take those and save a little bit of money. But luckily we got a spot on this bus. Right here in the bus depot, they have a coffee shop, so we're able to get some coffee before the bus tour. Very important. Very, very important. So as I said, you're only allowed to drive your private vehicle 15 miles into the park. Beyond that, you need to take one of the park buses, which you have to pay for. This keeps crowds down and keeps the area wild. The only way you can take your car all the way in is in May, they hold a lottery for a certain amount of time in September. So if you're one of those lucky few, good for you. Otherwise, you gotta take a bus. We've heard that those spots fill up within hours. Thousands of applicants for only a few hundred tickets, I think. That would be cool, but we're happy to take the bus today. We just got the spiel from our driver. He sounds awesome, so I think it's gonna be a really fun tour. I had heard this before, but there's been a landslide in the park, so we can't go all the way in. So unfortunately, they have to knock off about 20 miles. We've just spotted our first wildlife. A few male moose off of this side of the bus, and this is what it looks like on the bus. Wow. Everybody's taking pictures. This is the end of August, and it is the beginning of the moose rut, which is the moose mating season. And they get pretty aggressive, and they will fight with each other, and they will fight with you if you come across them, so you have to be real careful. We made it past the paved part of the park. We're on the dirt road, and I guess the weather's been pretty bad over the last few weeks and they got some snow a few days ago, so there is snow on the ground. Luckily, there is no precipitation today, although it is cloudy and we cannot see Denali. Keeping our eyes peeled for wildlife. After about an hour and a half on the bus, we have stopped at our first rest area. I think we get one more stop after this. This is a good rest area. There's lots of toilets, a little viewpoint, some information. So far, we've really enjoyed the tour. The bus driver is very informative. He tells us a lot of facts, some things that we didn't know, like this park actually doesn't have any hiking trails. This is one of the only national parks that you can just walk wherever you want. Normally, national parks kind of make sure that you stay on the trails everywhere. They do that because they figure the impact would be less if you just wander wherever you want instead of making hard hiking trails. So that's kind of neat to get little bits of information like that. So the bus driver has a camera that he can zoom in pretty far with, so if you see any wild Wildlife. He takes the camera and zooms it way in and there are little screens inside the bus that you can see very close up in case you don't have binoculars or a very good camera. I think summer is officially over here in Denali. Even though it is not even quite September yet, there is snow on the ground. Man, it is cold. It's got to be, I'd say in the 40s. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Californian. It is actually cold. <laughs> The 
bear was just walking down the side of the road and then saw something and took off after it and started running a little bit before it dipped over on the edge. definitely lucky we saw that and now we're a bit higher up and I cannot believe how much snow there is on the ground I was not prepared for this winter wonderland in August spotted more bears they're really far away though pro tip bring binoculars to Denali good ones made it to our turnaround point. We're at mile 42 right now. Unfortunately, like we said, there was a landslide a couple miles from here. Otherwise, we would go to, what did he say? Mile 60, 63? Yeah, 63. We're missing out on about 20 miles, but they prorate the amount that you pay if something like that happens. So we didn't pay the full amount that we would have if we would have gone all the way as far as they go, which isn't to the end of the road. This tour doesn't go all the way to the end, but still goes pretty far. On the drive back, we saw some caribou off on a very far ridge. We also saw some prairie dogs, and we made it back to the rest stop that we stopped at earlier. Normally, there would be some other spots down the road that we would stop because of the landslide we turned around a little earlier today. We didn't get a view of Denali Mountain today, which was unfortunate, but yesterday's views were incredible, so we're really thankful that we got to experience that. About an hour after our last rest stop, we have made it back to the bus depot. It was about a five hour tour, Normally the tour takes seven to eight hours, but because of that landslide, we turned around a little earlier. Which kind of stinks, but we're actually happy to have the extra time to do a couple other things. It's a little bit of a pricey tour. Um, as we said, because we couldn't go as far without the landslide, they prorated it. So it was a little bit less expensive than normal. Normally it's like 160 something dollars a person. Anything involving tourism in Alaska is pretty pricey. It is not a fantastic budget destination. You can also take the green bus, which is $60 per person. What the green bus is, is it's essentially a transit bus so it'll take the backpackers campers hikers into the park to the campgrounds and the lodges and different things like that so it's not narrated um, there's no tour guide and they are hop on hop off I believe so whenever they stop you can get off and then get on another bus that'll come by which can be an advantage but it also could be a disadvantage you get a little bit more freedom to do some hikes but you don't really know when the next bus is going to come and if that bus is full then you have to wait for the next one so that's a little bit of a gamble but you can still get a relatively similar experience for a lot less money if you don't care about the whole tour guide aspect that being said we really did enjoy the whole tour guide experience of this nicer bus uh, the more expensive buses are a little bit nicer too not a ton they're still kind of drafty school buses but they're a little bit more comfortable I actually went on a transit bus the last time I was in Denali and it was just like a school bus with the really uncomfortable seats and it was very drafty and cold. This one had those screens like we said earlier so when the guide does see some wildlife you can get a close-up view. They also give you a little gift bag on this tour which is kind of nice. It's a little Denali National Park tote bag. With some snacks. Yeah there's pop chips, a cookie, and two granola bars. Yeah and they had water on there too. So you get a little bit more for your money. I don't know if it's a hundred dollars worth per person more for your money, but since it was a little bit cheaper uh, because of the landslide, we, I think it was worth it for us. And also the transit buses were sold out. So <laughs> that's why we ended up doing this one. Yeah, even though we're kind of hitting the end of the summer, there was barely any availability. So make sure you book well in advance. All in all though, we had a great experience and I think we're both happy we did it. It's just beautiful. And that's the only way you can get into the park so you know if you want to see Denali definitely gotta take a bus gotta take a bus if you don't feel like taking any bus into Denali National Park you still have a little bit of an option the first 15 miles of the Denali Park Road is open to private vehicles so you can drive a little bit into the park and still have a chance to see some moose and bears if you like you do still have to pay the park entrance fee which I believe is $15 per person you have to stop at the visitor center or the bus depot to buy that and to it in your windshield there is no ranger stop as you enter into the park so it's kind of like on an honor system but if they catch you without it you will get a fine 
In this part of the park, there are a few designated hiking trails, unlike in the interior where you can just wander all over the place. There are a couple scenic lookouts in case the mountain is visible on that day that you're there. And yeah, if you just don't wanna pay a hundred plus dollars or whatever, or spend eight hours on a bus, you can just explore a little bit on your own. One really interesting thing that we learned on that tour is that in the winter months, there are no motorized vehicles allowed within the park. And that includes all of the park service vehicles too. So they actually get around the park via dog sled. We have come to the dog kennels where they keep all of the dogs for dog sledding. I heard more animals and I said, we have to do it. They are official Denali National Park sled dogs. That's the most Alaskan thing I've ever heard in my life. Let's go see them. Okay, we made it to the dog kennels. There are COVID rules, of course, but you're allowed to pet the dogs if you can reach them, but it's not like a free for all. And some of them were laying on their kennels and they're super cute and I love them already. <laughs> I'm betting his lead dog. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. He doesn't care about me at all. In my mind, I was in a room with like 20 dogs and they were all like jumping over me and licking me and I was holding puppies and stuff. This is still cool, but... <laughs> this is more reality. <laughs> this is not exactly what I had in my, in my mind. Have some three-week-old puppies over here. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I can't. They're so cute. <laughs> it's sad when it's gone. Freaking out. We drove back into the park in hopes of seeing just a little more wildlife. The moose are rutting right now, so they're very active, especially around this time of day. Fingers crossed, we'll see a few more. When it's only two pairs of eyes and one of them is driving, it's a little more difficult to spot wildlife. We thought we saw something, but I think it was a tree or a bush. I guess I was eating pizza. It's hard. I saw that. We saw some guy eating pizza. Wildlife. Like Kelly said, we can't really drive that far but it's still really nice to kind of explore at your own pace too. We'll go a little bit and if we don't find anything, then we'll just head to town and get some food. We got a wildlife jam. Not 100% sure we're allowed to pull over here. <laughs> you wanna go check it out? Yep. Came across a wildlife jam and it turns out there are about four moose cows back in the brush. That's pretty cool. They were relatively close, but far enough away to where it was a good enough distance uh, and unlike Yellowstone everyone was actually keeping their distance. <laughs> Well, we're definitely happy that we went back into the park. That was really awesome. You know, they say animals are more active around dusk time, and I've always found that to be true. We were like, oh, let's just do it on the way to dinner. Take an extra half hour or so. So we got to see more animals, which is always a good thing. We're gonna end this video here. We're gonna go have some dinner, but we have a lot of Alaskan adventures to come. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss those. This is Kelly and Kevin from The Awkward Tourists. Peace out. A crazy spot. How's this? Good. Is this good?
so we're missing out on about. You can read uh -oh. your books now, or you can read them. Oh no! Read them back at wherever you're staying, the hotels. The bus driver will film it, and it displays on these little cameras that, and it, and it display and it displays on these little screens that is inside the bus. So you, can, if you can't actually see it with your own eyes, you can see it on the little screen. Say that again. <laughs> About an hour after our last rest stop, we have made it back to the train, not train depot, this is the bus.